Coming up in today's video, we take a look at a Plastic Soldier Company 172 German Stug, and I guide you through how I paint it from start to finish. Airbrushing German camouflage can sometimes be rather daunting and also a little tricky, but I explain how you can overcome these obstacles in this video. Be sure to let me know below how you found it. Okay, so let's take a look at this Plastic Soldier Company 172 Stug. So it's a single sprue and full disclosure, it's been on my desk for about three or four years. It was free with the Battle Group Market Garden Supplement. So the sprue might have been updated since the recording of this video. Um, but the sprue itself is fantastic for wargaming. Included um, is the options to build an early G, late G, a Stu 42. If you wanted to get more than just the one sprue, so this is called a reinforcement sprue, I believe. They do do a box set of three vehicles um, and it just saves you a little bit of money. But I only need the one, so I'm happy with this. And the detail's fantastic. If you wanted a little bit more detail and you wanted more parts, you're obviously going to have to go for like a Dragon Academy or an Airfix sort of kit. But for Wargaming, this is perfect. It slaps together really easily and really quickly. So as you can tell, there's very little in terms of parts that you need to put together. Most of it's already molded on there for you. Um, I didn't have any breakages that I can think of. Um, it all just went together super easily. Um, and all you need really is a Stanley knife and a file. So try and be careful with the Stanley knife. Um, you'll be able to see in a moment that I wasn't. And my wife gave me a nice cupcake band-aid or plaster depending on where you are in the world there we go so I did cut myself so be very careful when you're doing this I also use some very cheap super glue I'm talking I think you get five of these for like two or three Australian dollars so some very cheap super glue because the parts were rather thick so there was no real super glue runaway so it went together really nicely now this particular stug is one based from uh, Luftwaffe division in Normandy so I'm trying to keep it as similar as I can uh, and the reference picture will be cropping up from time to time within this video. As always, I try and keep the chassis away from the tracks just to make the painting of them 10 times easier. So if you can do it, definitely do it. So to start off with, with the airbrushing, I'm going to go with Dark Yellow 2 uh, from Tamiya. It's a fantastic colour for German Yellow in late war, mid war, or any German yellow really, for the second world war. It's really, really good color. It's, it's my go-to uh, for the most part uh, when I'm talking about water-based paints. The airbrush I'm using is a Harder and Steinbeck. Oh, I've just broken um, the gun shield for the MG42 or 34. So uh, yeah, I'll have to fix that one up. But this is a Harder and Steinbeck two-in-one Evo, uh, and I'm using a point 2-0 needle and nozzle for this which is included in their airbrush kit. Now I'm taping up part of the Schutzen um, to go with the Luftwaffe tank that I'm trying to copy. Now make sure when using Tamiya paints that you shake them really well and if you're using the 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle which I've gone to now for the camo part of this I'm putting drops in and I'm going to add some acrylic thinners from Tamiya. Always try and keep it with the same company. You can see I'm using this and I'm counting the dots. I want to keep it at about a one to one ratio when I'm using this really fine needle and nozzle. So I'm really being precise here and it really does pay off. If you go too much, it's going to just blow out and it's going to run away. If you don't go enough, you're going to start getting splattering because uh, the paint is just going to clog the nozzle. So it's a fine art, you will get there, especially if you're using the 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle. So as you can see, you can get some really fine lines when we're using this smaller nozzle. Uh, whatever reference you're using, try and copy it. You can just go balls to the wall and just do whatever you want to do. I mean, uh, from what I understand, I'm no historian, but from what I understand, uh, the German tanker has pretty much had freedom of what sort of camo scheme they're going for. There was no sort of universal scheme, especially towards the latter end of the war when paint was scarce and they just could come up with anything that would sort of work. Um, and as you can tell with German armor, if you're into this period, it's all kinds of crazy, but it also makes for painting fun. 
So I had a bit of freedom at this part because the picture or the reference photo that I was using didn't really help me. Um, I, I think it was just blobs. So try not to make them all the same. Try and space them out. Remembering that we've also got the green to put on as well. Um, and you know, just, just take your time really. Using a bit of kitchen towel like I am, or a bit of cardboard, it's really good for protecting the paintwork underneath when you're trying to get the turret. Um, uh, you don't, some people won't glue the, tu the um, sorry, the turret, the gun barrel on. Um, but yeah, it's really up to you if you want to just protect that paintwork. Now we're using NATO green from Tamiya. Again, at that one to one ratio, because I'm using the 0.15 millimeter needle and nozzle for this. So I'm having fun here, I'm just giving a rough idea of what it should look like because I'm using that reference picture so as long as it looks similar, my biggest part was this part that I've just revealed now. That really will make it, when you're looking at the picture, that's what people's eyes are drawn to because it's different to the rest of the camo pattern. So NATO green and red brown work really great at this scale. But if you're looking at the brown or the green going, okay, it's a little bit too dark for my taste, just add a drop of white into your mixture, just put it into the palette and then add it to the airbrush. Make sure you're using Tamiya white as well. Try and keep the paints all from the same company. Now, this is a hack that a lot of people don't use. That's because people are going to be modulating their vehicles or they're going to be panel highlighting, but it's to go back over your model with the base color so dark yellow too and when i say go back over i mean tidy up so i'm tidying up the camo here i'm getting rid of some of the splatter i'm removing some of the mistakes that i might have made trying to make bigger gaps between the camo as you can see here and i'm really trying to make this look worn so this technique will make this model look really worn um, and it's also going to help me tidy up now if i'm using my 0.15 needle it's not going to create too much mess however it does create a little mess a little tiny bit of splattering so this is going to clean that up if you're new to airbrushing this is a technique that you really want to use because it's really going to help you and it's going to give you a lot more control and it's going to give you those finer um camo marks even finer than what you would be able to get with your 0.15 needle you can also use your 0.20 needle as well for this and then there you go that's what it looks like so as i've mentioned before i try and keep the top of the chassis separated from where the tracks are just so it's going to make my life 10 times easier when i'm painting those areas so to start off with with any road wheels that i paint i always use german gray to me i also do a rubber color which i've utilized but I have tons of Vallejo paints uh, and they're a lot easier to store than the Tamiya glass bottles so I'll just go with this German grey. You can see that I'm using a fine brush here and you want to do that just because we don't want to be making too many mistakes. Great thing about acrylics is if you make a mistake just get a bit of water on the end of your brush or just rub it off with your finger before it dries and you'll hopefully save whatever mistake you've made. Now for the tracks, it's very simple. I use black. Any type of black will do. Obviously I use Vallejo. I'm pretty much always using Vallejo when I'm doing details like this. And I use black. Some people will use a very dark brown. Uh, I've seen some people go a rusty color. I try and avoid that. I just go straight black for this because I'm gonna dry brush it with a brown later on. This is gonna give it the worn brown, uh, rusty sort of color that you expect tracks to go. Now to dirty up that area, I'm using Umbar wash. It's a brown wash um, and it sort of dries like a watery mud color, which is perfect for this particular part of the vehicle. It's gonna be going through fields and all kinds of swamps or whatever. So it's gonna be dirty. All right, so we wanna make sure we're capturing that. And as I said, I'm gonna dry brush these tracks in flat brown. Now you can see how easy this is when I don't have that top part of the tank annoying me or in my way, I can just dry brush away and the brown really starts coming into its own. But it doesn't, it's not making the tracks look super brown. It's just making them look worn and it's making them look rather rusty, which is perfect. 
Now avoid trying to get this on the wheels um, because we're going to weather them in other ways later on. Okay, so now it's time for the equipment. So before I give it a wash, I'm going to go with German Grey. And this is, again, for the metal object. So you can do all of this in one hit. So obviously you could go the road wheels in German Grey. And then you could go the equipment in German Grey as well. You don't have to keep breaking it up like I am. I'm doing that purely for the video. So there's other bits of tools. Uh, there's depending on the vehicle there might be a machine gun that needs to be painted um, you can see that there's a, a wheel attached to the back here that also needed to be painted so just keep an eye out because if you're like me I end up missing a few bits and at the very end I'm like oh man I missed that now for my wooden objects I'm going with flat earth for the initial base color you can see the flat earth sort of merges in with the red brown but that's okay because we're going to give it a wash later on and we're going to give it a highlight so it will stand out a lot more uh, and I believe my camera is really not picking it up properly. So this Plastic Soldier Company stock has quite a bit of equipment on there so we just want to make sure that you're capturing it on both sides of the vehicle uh, and if you're adding boxes and other storage as well um, that would be a fantastic idea but I wanted to add a lot of foliage which we'll see later on. Now for the wash I'm adding uh, some enamel thinners from MIG just one big blob and then I'm adding about five blobs of the black enamel wash. It's really important that you gloss varnish your model before you apply this. The reason we want to do that is because the tidying up process is going to require it. If you don't do that it's going to eat into the paint and you won't be able to tidy it up. So what I'm doing here is a form of a pin wash. So I'm putting some paint on the tip of my brush and I'm just dabbing the areas in which I want the wash to run. So you can see that I've just dabbed the corner there and it's just ran the entire length of that particular area. Now some people will coat their entire model in the wash and that's absolutely fine. In my opinion, I don't like that because it's very messy and you don't get the accuracy that you do with a pin wash. So you pick how you want to do it. I prefer a pin wash. Let me know in the comments what you prefer to do. So to tidy enamel washes, it's really straightforward. You can use um, your enamel thinners on the paintbrush, or you can use a cotton bud with a bit of enamel thinners, or you can just use your cotton bud. So I wait for about 15 to 30 minutes, sometimes 60 minutes, and I'll use the cotton bud without any thinners on there initially to see what I can pick up. If that wash is being stubborn, then I'll add a little bit of the enamel thinners on there, very little amount to try and clean it up. Now we've got to go back over our base colors. So I'm using German gray and I'm highlighting the metal equipment. So you can see I'm just picking out all the details. And then because it's a towing cable, I start adding little dots along the length of it. And that's to sort of simulate the breaks between the cables. Uh, if you've ever seen cables, they're sort of obviously wound. So that's what I'm trying to show here. Now for the last highlight, I use German Grey and London Grey at a 2 to 1 ratio. So just adding a little bit of that light grey in there just to really make it hard, um, stand out. You can use also use weathering pencils um, or a sort of a metallic colour. I have some weathering pencils that I wanted to use for this but they didn't arrive in time. And they were recommended to me by a subscriber. Um, so hopefully that will be in a future video. Okay, so for the wood, I'm using unbar wash again, and I'm just making sure that I'm being tidy here. Because we've already done the bulk of the work, we've put the wash on, we've done some of the highlights for the, the metal and that, I don't want to be smothering all these bits in unbar wash, so just be very careful and just pick out the little bits of wood that need the wash. Whilst that's drying, I get no oil from Citadel, so it's an acrylic wash, and I'm doing a pin wash on parts of the vehicle that 
I wasn't 100% happy with with the enamel wash. Now you might be thinking it's a bit crazy doing enamel and acrylic. I just found the acrylic will just help me tidy up a little bit, especially in the thicker areas or the wider areas that require a wash. Um, but be careful with acrylic washes. If you make a mistake, use water and tidy it up before it dries. So with the wood, we're going back over with that base color of flat earth and we're just highlighting the bits of wood. So this box here, um, is, there was a shovel and an ax, I believe on this vehicle as well. So just highlighting it all nicely and just scratching it in. That's my method. I like to scratch little bits at a time, scratch, scratch, scratch until you're happy with it. If you put a big blob on, you're going to make all kinds of mistakes and not be happy. And then to highlight the wood, I'm using a new wood from Vallejo and I'm just scratching the very outer edges just to give those edges a nice highlight so you can look at that and go, it looks wood, woody. <laughs> if you want to add wood grains, you can do, but honestly, at 172 scale wood grains, do you really need to do that? I'll let you be the judge of it. Okay, so I didn't show you this, but I base coated this fire extinguisher in German Field Grey World War II. I washed it with the enamel wash, and now I'm going back over it with that initial German Field Grey World War II wash. From what I could tell, fire extinguishers uh, for the Germans in the Second World War weren't bright red. Um, the ones I found online, at least anyway, were of the German sort of grey green colour. So to highlight that, I'm using German Field Grey World War II and Green Grey at a one to one ratio. I'm mixing that in a little palette with an old brush and then I'm just applying it here. Scratching away at the top of the surface and just trying to do probably about a quarter of the sort of edge of that extinguisher. Right, now with all that detail done, we can go ahead and glue it together. So I'm using my really cheap and nasty super glue. I say nasty, but it's actually pretty good. It cost me about two or three dollars and you get about five of them. Um, so yeah, if you've got access to something like this in your local shops, I would highly recommend getting them for jobs like this. Then I'm moving on to chipping. So I'm using German camo black brown and I'm using the old um, bit of sponge or foam technique and I'm just dabbing away. Don't go crazy. Do not put a lot of paint on it. Always test it on a bit of kitchen towel or an old model before you go ahead and do that. And then for some of the areas that might have scraped a bush or hit a wall or something, I'm using a very fine brush and I'm adding just nice straight lines or scratches. And then once that's done, I'm going to use Iraqi sand. And the reason I'm using Iraqi sand to go alongside some of these scratches and to fill in where those chip marks are is because obviously when paint chips it's either going to go down to the bare metal or it's just going to scratch the surface of the paint so the paint is going to be a little bit lighter and that's what i'm trying to simulate here i'm just adding little dots of this within those chip marks you don't have to do it with the whole thing you can leave some of that dark chip mark color on its own but it's worth doing it just gives it a little extra color now we've got to glue the side skirts on so make sure that you've got everything in order before you do this because you don't want to make any mistakes. And then I'm gluing it on. In hindsight, I probably would have used my Tamiya glue for this. It's just a lot more tidier, but it went on nicely. Now we want to add some foliage. So Green Stuff World Tall Shrubbery is your best bet for anything foliage uh, related for tanks. It just saves you doing it yourself and it comes in loads um, of quantity it's really worth getting some if you haven't and i just snip away and i will fit dry fit what i want to use just to make sure that i'm happy with the location and then i will go ahead and apply some pva glue use my tweezers and put it in place and you can try and manipulate it the bad thing about pva glue is it takes ages to dry so you've got to try and manipulate it and hold it where you want it to so i wanted some hanging over the edge of the side skirts as you can see but I got there in the end and then now it looks like a big weed that you'll find in the garden I'm happy and then there we go there's my stug that I've painted for Normandy so I'm not 
showing you in this particular video how I use pigments and the weathering masters. I've shown the weathering masters in other videos. I haven't shown pigments. Uh, that's something I'll show you in a future video. So let me know in the comments, did you enjoy this video? Are you happy that I'm back to 172? Or do you want me to go back to 28 mil, 15 mil? Uh, I really enjoyed this. I've got a King Tiger coming out soon. That's also gonna be uh, 172 scale, but there's a little bit more detail in that because it's an actual um, proper sort of scale modeling kit. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. The more likes I get for these kind of videos, the more um, views they tend to get. So if you could like it, if you're not, that would be fantastic. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, I'd really appreciate any support. To the patrons that I do have, thank you very much. It really does mean a lot and your money is going towards helping the channel grow. Anyway, I will leave it here and I will catch you at the next one. Thanks. Bye.